Hey everyone, in this series we're going to make this Pokemon Dex app you see on the right here using React and Material UI. I got a lot of feedback on my previous Material UI videos of people wanting to see a complete breakdown of how to build an application using React and Material UI, so I decided to throw together a quick Pokedex and I'm going to show you guys how to build this. It's going to be a five part video and if we look at how the Pokedex looks right now, it's very basic. We have a little search bar up here where I can type in, for example, CHA and all of the Pokemon with CHA in their name will show up. And then when I click on one of the cards for each Pokemon, it'll bring me to a page where I can see more about them. This page is intentionally left a bit bare bones so that once you guys follow along and complete all of the videos, you can use all the knowledge you've learned to spice this page up for every Pokemon by yourselves. The code for this project is already on GitHub. It is completely public, so feel free to clone it or follow along with these videos. We're going to be using Pokey API um, to get all the data from the Pokemon, and the tutorials will be split up into five different parts. Part one, which is this part, will be pretty much how to do the setup and the routing. Part two will be creating the actual layout for each page. Part three will be adding the data to that layout and sort of sprucing it up. Part four will be switching out mock data for the actual API request. And part five, we're going to learn how to set up this sort of app bar with um, the search bar so that we can add um, this sort of autocomplete uh, search bar to our application. So, and once again, if you find value in these videos, please consider leaving a comment, liking the video, or subscribing. I can't tell you how much it helps the channel with the YouTube algorithm uh, to get the videos out there and, and sort of just get a lot more people um, viewing these videos about React and Material UI so I can continue making more. Um, so, without further ado, let's jump right in. So you can see here on the left, by the way, I have two applications open. One is going to be uh, the actual finished product and one is going to be the one we are building. And that way it's easier for us to go back and forth and sort of outline and visualize exactly what component we're building and how everything is going to fall together. And on my left side, I have the code here. And this right now is just this code right here and it's just standard create react app so first things first let's go through and start gutting this out usually the first thing i like to do is sort of delete the css files delete the test files um, get rid of the index.css files get rid of the logo.svg and we can even get rid of setup test.js now in the app we're going to delete everything and just leave an empty div for now so let's go ahead and do that. Remove all references to the files we've just deleted. The same inside of index. Let's get rid of that. And here we are. We just have a complete blank application. We are starting from scratch. The first thing we should do is go into our index.html and under the body tag, there's some code we can add to make our lives easier down the road. And I'm going to paste that code in right there and explain it. This code is essentially just style that we want to apply to the body of the page. I'm setting the margin equal to zero, the height equal to 100%, and I'm setting the background color to this nice baby blue color. The reason we have to do these things is because later on in the tutorial, we're going to be using Matilui's grid, and we're going to be using spacing to space all the cards out like you see here. However, if we don't add spacing, or sorry, if we don't add this margin zero and white height 100% to the body of our HTML page, What's going to happen when we use spacing is it's going to offset some of the page and it's going to look really weird. So I'm going to look at this. I'm going to look at the finished code and I'm going to remove um, all that code. And you'll see what I mean by this. You'll see how we sort of have this weird outline where the app bar no longer spans the top of the page. And when you type stuff in, uh, things sort of get a bit funky with the actual width of the screen. So that's why uh, we sort of need all this code and also the background color is setting it there so it applies to everything even if the height of the page doesn't come up to the very top so now that we've got that added in the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install all the dependencies we need so if you'll notice these are the dependencies that come with create react app but we're going to need a bit more than that so what we are going to need i'm going to open a second terminal i'm going to npm i the first thing we're going to need is axios we're also and axios is a library to make uh, api requests we're not going to use it just yet but we will need it we're going to need material ui slash core we're going to need material ui icons 
we're going to need React Router DOM, and I think that is it. So you can type all of those in in one line, and it will pretty much go ahead and install. While that's installing, let's also look at the API that we're going to be using in the future. Essentially, the API is quite simple. You type in a Pokemon name, and it will give you all this data um, that you need for it. What we are going to want to do is, for the purpose of testing out our um, endpoints and the purpose of testing out our code, we're going to want to start with mock data so that we don't have to actually hit the API to begin with. So I'm going to make a new folder or a new file called mockdata.js. And pretty much what I've done is I have a file here and it just has a bunch of different Pokemon in it in the same format that the API is going to uh, give you Pokemon when you look for um, when you query all the Pokemon. So for example, um, we can see here the first Pokemon. And if you're unfamiliar with Pokemon, every single Pokemon has a name and an ID. Their ID is sort of the number that they show up in the Pokemon index. So, so for example, the first Pokemon is Bulbasaur, the second one is Ivysaur, and the third one is Venusaur. Um, and we can see here that all our mock data is, is pretty much just an object, and each ID correlates to just a bunch of information about that Pokemon. So for example, Pokemon number one, the name is Bulbasaur, their ID is one, their species is all of that stuff, their height is seven, their weight, and these are all just sort of misc details um, about the Pokemon itself. And then we have a sprite URL, which actually uh, gives you the image that we would want to use in our application. So you can get all this mock data on the um, GitHub page to put it into your application. It's just under source and then mock data right here. So you can copy and paste this into your own application if you're following along. Um, but yeah, we're just going to have this here. We're not going to use it in this video, but we might in the next or the video after that. And you'll see why it's really useful and why we add mock data first. So the next thing we're going to want to do now that everything is done installing is we're going to set up our routing in our application. So if you've never used browser router before, it's a, or a React router, it's just a really, really, really easy way to sort of denote um, what should show up depending on uh, what page the user is on. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go into our index and pass in what is known as a router provider. In order to do that, we're going to need to import two things. Number one, we're going to have to import the router object from React Router DOM. And number two, we're going to have to import create browser history from a library called history, which I believe comes default with React. If I'm wrong, we'll just go ahead and install that as well, but I think it comes default. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is you can see here our application is wrapped. Um, our app is being called from index.js and it's wrapped around these strict mode tags. When we want to add a provider to React, and a provider is just essentially something that um, allows every component that is nested under it to access a couple of props that that provider um, gives you. Um, all you have to do really is for the uh, React router is add a router here and we just initially initialize it with um, our default history. And um, you'll see here the way we initialize the default history is essentially all we're doing is we're saying history is just going to be equal to create browser history, which is just a creator method that comes from history. Um, so we just set that in here and we wrap our app around in these router tags. And this will make it so that your whole entire application will um, be able to have access to any routing information that it might need in the future. In this application, you'll see it's not the most important thing, but it's still a good habit to get into, especially if you're building larger scale applications. So now that we're done at index.js, let's go to app.js and let's actually make the routes themselves. Actually, even before we do that, let's look at the two pages we're going to have. The first page we're going to have is sort of this Pokedex page where you can see every single uh, Pokemon, Pokemon laid out uh, just like this. And when you click on one of them, it'll bring you to the actual uh, slash and then the Pokemon's ID where you can find more information about the Pokemon itself. And you'll see here there's a little button here that I can get back to it. So knowing that, let's create two components here. We'll call one of them Pokedex.js and we'll call the other one Pokemon.js. And the Pokedex.js is going to be this view. And the Pokemon.js is going to be the view where you see specific information about that one Pokemon. So let's go into Pokemon.js and let's initialize just our basic, our super, super, super basic uh, React um, component. So we're going to import React from React. And we're going to say const Pokedex equals, and we're going to be uh, just straight up 
I'm returning just a div, let's say, and then say this is the Pokédex page. Then we're going to export default Pokédex. And that's pretty much it. And we can copy this and apply it to the Pokémon page as well. And we'll just go ahead and rename it um, to the Pokémon. Oops. Pokémon page. Change the X part, and then we'll say this is the Pokémon page. All right, now we're not using any of these yet, but we're gonna need them in just a second. So we know we want the Pokedex page to display when we have just a, um, either nothing or just a slash. And when we go to a specific ID, for example, slash like uh, 900, it'll go to that Pokemon's thing. And if it's not found, if the Pokemon ID is not found, it'll uh, display not found. So if I come to 400, for example, you'll see it's whatever this guy is. Um, I, by the way, I never stayed up to date with Pokemon past the initial like four or five generations, so I'll probably stick to just naming the first couple and not talking about the last few, but uh, besides the point. So let's go into our app.js, and the first thing we want to do is we want to wrap our entire thing. We can get rid of this div here, Oops. and we want to wrap our entire thing with something called switch. And you'll see here, we're going to import switch and something called route from React Router DOM. And inside of this switch, this is pretty much, if you're familiar with switch cases and the rest of programming, it sort of works the exact same way. What you can do here is you can define a route. You can say what path you want that route to be, and then what component you want to render, if you're unfamiliar with React. Uh, um, if you're unfamiliar with React Router, you can say what component to render if the path um, is equal to that. So in our case, let's go ahead and import the Pokemon and Pokedex files uh, that we just created. We'll put that at the top here. So we're just simply importing Pokedex and Pokemon. In the first case, whenever we have a route where the exact path is just a slash, what we are going to render is just this Pokemon Pokedex component. And now, for the other case, when we want to render uh, instead of the Pokedex, when it's slash and then an ID, a Pokemon's ID, we want to render the Pokemon page, we do it almost the exact same way. The only difference is, you can see here, we're putting colon Pokemon ID. And this denotes to React Router DOM uh, that this is going to be a variable that we should be able to access in this Pokemon, uh, in this Pokemon component. So let's go back to our application, and you'll see here, um, it's already reloaded. When we're just looking at nothing, it's going to say this is the Pokedex page. Now, if I type slash like one, two, three, you'll see it switches to this is the Pokemon page. So the routing is working correctly. Now, let's get in there and just put some really simple logic into the Pokemon page just to um, pretty much take out the uh, Pokemon ID and display it on the page. For example, it should say something like this is the Pokemon page for Pokemon number and then the Pokemon ID. So essentially, we just want to get that value. So all we really have to do here is go into our Pokemon thing. We can take in props. And then over here, we can uh, take out uh, something called match from props. Then we can also destructure something called params uh, from match. And then finally, from params is where all the variables that we put in our URL will be including Pokemon ID. So we can say const Pokemon ID, it's pretty much just gonna be equal to params. And now over here, we can change this into a nice little formatted string. And I can say this is the Pokemon page for Pokemon number, and then I'm just gonna put the Pokemon ID. There we go. This is the Pokemon page for Pokemon number 123. So that's the all, pretty much all for this video. We've pretty much set up the scaffolding. In the next video, we're gonna go about how to actually create the layout and we're gonna work on creating um, uh, the pretty much a uh, grid and the cards for everything that we want. Um, once again, if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment or liking the video. Hope to, uh, and I hope to see all of you guys in the next video.